today we are going to study uh, on the topic of knowing the Holy Spirit. Knowing the Holy Spirit, it's a teaching and there's a lot of verses and so you'll have to take notes and um, I'm so encouraged how last Sunday's message was a blessing to Priya then she was able to use it to share the gospel with the people of the Jehovah's Witness. Uh, that's a blessing and so uh, keep keep uh, studying the word of God, keep witnessing, be brave, okay? Uh, don't be ashamed when you get an opportunity, fire, okay? Shoot. And so don't have a backup. Um, so today we are going to study on knowing the Holy Spirit. We are going to study about the Holy Spirit. Where is my markers? Okay. Okay? Knowing the Holy Spirit. And so we have a lot of... Um, points today and um, I would encourage you to take note of it because if you cannot um, come along with me in a floor as I will be sharing because if we are going to look at everything I mean you have to look at everything but if you are going to be slow then you will have to be here until 1 o'clock but if you are going to be uh, with my speed and uh, then we can go home before 12 o'clock. And so we're going to see about knowing the Holy Spirit. Why is it important to study the doctrines? That it is important to study doctrine because it is the command of the Bible. Amen? Amen. We are commanded in the Bible to teach doctrine and to, and to, be, to have a sound doctrines um, as we follow. Uh, why is it important? Because in these last, day, uh, in, in this last days, we see a lot of things happening. Uh, we see that people have false gospels everywhere. We see that um, uh, all these cults doctrines are uh, come up, and the churches, cults churches, are grown. And uh, <coughs> sorry, we see what a mess all over over the world, uh, and especially uh, even among Christians, we see a lot of uh, problem in doctrines. And so, we as a Christian, as the Bible believing Christian, it is necessary for us to study the true doctrines from the Bible. What I'm going to share with you is nothing outside the Bible. It's all from the Bible. And um, and so that is what we need to be content with studying the scripture. I've been talking to one girl and uh, she's been keeping in touch and writing to me about she basically she wants to experience a deeper relationship with God. But basically what she means is um, and she means of uh, she wants to experience it's about some kind of power from heaven that will come and then she will be able to throw people down or speak in tongue or see God with her naked eyes and um, that is what she is been praying and and she wants to experience that and I've been sharing from the Bible and showing her um, scriptures in the Bible but no that's not but she thinks that God can still reveal himself, uh, you know, God can come in her room and reveal himself to her or she can have the power uh, all these fake uh, faith healers are using on the television and, um, um, and she is into all this. So I asked one question, what if you don't get all these things, will you still love Jesus Christ? Will you still trust Jesus Christ? Will you still follow Jesus Christ? She said, yes, I will. And then he says, and she says, I, I still believe God can give, and if He does not give me, my faith will be dumb. My faith, you know, it will, so my passion will fade away. Okay? Now that is what happens. When you, instead of following the giver, you follow the gift, and you don't get the gift, that's what will happen. Never go after the gift. Go after the giver. Amen? Yeah. You need God. You don't need it. Uh, you need God to give you everything. Whatever is right, He gives. Amen? So, when your focus is on the gifts and not on the giver, you're in trouble. And when having revealed, when God has revealed to you the truth and you still go after the gifts that God doesn't want you to get and you still pursue after it, then you will get it. The Bible says that God will send inside a strong delusion that you will believe a lie. That's dangerous. Huh? Benny Hinn says he goes and prays over the grave of Catherine Kuhlman. He gets the power from Catherine Kuhlman's dead body in the grave. That's how he gets the power to do all this thing. So what is he having in him? The evil spirit. That's dangerous. Okay? 
go after the Lord, go after the Lord. I think it's cool, somebody wants to, uh, knows how to make it uh, go, just do it. Okay? Okay, we are going to study on the doctrines of the Holy Spirit, knowing the Holy Spirit. Now, only certain points I've taken which is necessary for us, uh, for our faith. I mean, everything is in the Bible is necessary, but the points that I've taken is sufficient for us to teach all about the Holy Spirit, actually. And so I hope this will help you out in your day-to-day -day life, in your belief, and as you um, get opportunity to share it with the people. As we study about the Holy Spirit, knowing the Holy Spirit, we're going to see His existence, His eternal existence. Was there a beginning for the Holy Spirit? Or was He always from the beginning? When did He exist? When God created the Holy Spirit? Or the Holy Spirit was always there? We will see what the Bible says. I want you to turn your Bible with me to the book of Genesis chapter 1. His eternal existence. Genesis chapter 1. Was there a beginning for the Holy Spirit? If there is a beginning for the Holy Spirit, then He is a created being. Or is a created force. But we will also see in the scripture, is he a person? Or he is just a force like the Jehovah's Witness say? Or like the William Brunham's only Jesus teaches? Or like the, some other dog, uh, cults will say, he is an energy or a force? We will see what the Bible says about the Holy Spirit. Is he God? Is he a person? Is, uh, does he have a beginning? Or what does the Bible say? And so as we see under the title of His Eternal Existence, we see in Genesis chapter 1, verse number 1. In Genesis chapter 1, verse number 1, we read, In the beginning, God... Now come on, God created? The heaven and the earth. And second, so who created? God. In the beginning. Verse number 2. And the whole earth was without form and void. And, void. and darkness. Yes. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the earth. Amen. The Spirit of God. When the Bible uses the Spirit of God, it's basically speaking about the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God, or God's Spirit, okay, or Spirit of the Lord. The Bible speaks about the Holy Spirit. And so we find, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit, the capital S, you see, is a reference to the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Amen? We don't find a beginning for the Holy Spirit, but rather we find when God was creating everything, the Spirit of God, in verse number 2, is moving over the face of the earth. There's no beginning. He was always there. We don't read a beginning. See in the book of Hebrews chapter, uh, chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse number 14, anybody got, come on, read it. Let me see who is getting it first. Hebrews chapter 9, verse number 14. How much more? How much more? Shall the blood of Christ. Shall the blood of Christ. Who through the eternal spirit. Who? Through the eternal spirit. <coughs> through the eternal spirit. What? Through the eternal spirit. Through the eternal spirit. Eternal. Eternal. Do you know what is the meaning of eternal spirit? What does eternal spirit mean? There's no end. There's no beginning. It always existed eternally. Amen? Eternally. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, 
offered himself without spot to God. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. We read about the reference eternal spirit showing that the spirit of God was eternal. He had no beginning. He had no end. He was always there with God. He is God. Okay, then we will see. But we see here, he had an eternal existence. There was no, he was not created, but he always existed. Eternally existed. So one thing you understand from these two or three verses that I gave in, verse, in Genesis chapter 1, verse number 1 and 2, that when God created, the Spirit of God moved over the face of the earth. And then we find in Hebrews chapter 9, verse number 14, he was Eternally is known as the eternal spirit. Amen? Amen. Is an eternal spirit. Now, now since he's an eternal spirit, if there was no beginning for him, if he was not created, then the question comes: Is he God? Right? Because only God was not created. Only God was always from the beginning. Right? Only God was from the beginning. So what? Oh, uh, is he God? Let us see what the Bible says about the Holy Spirit. He is deity. He is deity. What does the Bible say about? Do you can you just tell me if there is anything that tells you in your mind that God is God? Is there anything that comes to your mind? Yeah, do you remember any verse or anything in the Bible that makes you to say that yes, he is God, or is he a force of God? Sorry? He said I'm saying a comforter. Yeah, he said a comforter. Okay. I want you I want you to you're very close. Genesis in Genesis says also. What is that? In Genesis it says no. Yeah. Let us make men in our image. Let us make men in our image. The plurality of the singular God. One God in three person which we studied. One in essence, difference in persons okay but uh, okay we'll take that as consideration God said let us make man in our image let us make man in our image as I'm saying that something is coming into my mind come to book of Isaiah this is not there in my notes but it just popped up in my mind Isaiah so Okay, Isaiah chapter 48, verse number 16. Isaiah 48, verse number 16. Let me see who is getting it. Let me see who is reading it. Come. Yes? Come ye near, Come ye near unto me. Hear ye this. Hear this. I have not spoken in secret from the I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. From the time that, I, that it was. From the time that it was. There am I. There am I. And now the Lord God. And now the Lord God. And His Spirit. And His Spirit, that the Holy Spirit has sent me. Jesus is speaking. Jesus who has been sent by the Lord God and His Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Now Jesus is sent into this earth. That God becoming man. God taking the form of a man. Taking the flesh and the Spirit of God. And the Lord God sending Jesus Christ. That's why in the book of John we read. If you do not I know he has sent to me. that If you do not believe that Jesus is he. Then you still die in your sin. You go to hell. You say I believe in the dead burial and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. But I do not believe that Jesus is God. Then where do I go? You go in hell. If you don't believe Jesus is God, you still go to hell. Okay? Well, so we find here, come in here unto me, here it is, I have not spoken in secret. From the beginning, from the time it was, there am I, and now the Lord God and His Spirit had sent to me. His Spirit. You know, the Bible says what? God is a? Spirit. God is? Hey Spirit, now the, the Jehovah's Witness say, don't know it's a force or anything. So basically what you're saying is God is an energy. Or God is a force. God is a Spirit. John chapter 4. Right? And so we find that uh, the Lord God and His Spirit has sent to me. So the Spirit of God is there from eternal existing. 
with God, for He is God. And uh, we will see the, uh, under the title of His deity, we see in the book of Acts chapter 5. In the book of Acts chapter 5, it's speaking about Ananias and Sapphira making a promise to give to God. When you make a promise, you better keep the promise. So the best thing is, don't ever make a promise, but make a commitment. Because the winners make commitments, losers make promises. When you promise, you can break it. But when you make a commitment, you don't break it, right? You keep, you fulfill it. So as Christians, we are supposed to make commitments to God. We make commitments and dedications to God. You know, these people made a promise. What happened? They wanted to give a part of their property and their uh, things to God's work and their ministry because that's what was happening in the beginning. If you read the book of Acts, they did not call anything that they owned as their own, but rather they gave it for God's work and everything was common for God's ministry among God's people. But in Acts chapter 5, we see something that happened. What happened in Acts chapter 5? Read for me verse number 1, 2, and 3. Somebody who got it. But a certain man, but a certain man called, Ananias and called Ananias and Sapphira, his wife, his wife sold a possession. Sold a possession. And kept back. And kept back. Part of the price. Part of the price. His wife also. His wife also. Being privy. Being prevail, privy. Privy. Privy to it. To it. And bought a certain part. And bought a certain part. And laid it at the apostles' feet. And laid it at the apostles' feet. Now verse number three. But Peter said. But Peter said. Ananias. Ananias. Why has Satan filled thine heart? Why has Satan filled thine heart? To lie to the Holy Spirit. To lie to who? Holy Ghost. To lie to the Holy Ghost. And to keep back the part of the price of the land. And to keep back the part of the price of the land. Read to me next verse. While he remained. While he remained. What was it not their own? Was it not their own? And after it was sold. And after it was sold. Was it not in thine own power? Was it not in thine own power? Why thou why hast thou con, con, conceived this thing in thine heart? Mm. And the next sentence. Thou hast not lied unto me. Thou hast not lied unto me. Men. Oh, unto men. Sorry. But unto God. But unto God. God. In verse number three. He says, but Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? You see, Christian, keep your heart pure. When you lie, you're lying to God. You can say something to your husband, you can say something to your wife, you can say something that's not right to children, you can say something to your pastor. You're lying to God when it comes to God's business. Okay? Be careful. But Peter said Ananias, why? Because these people made a commitment that they were to give some, all these things to God's ministry. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart? Thank God that is not, you know, God has not struck any of us dead. Amen? Amen? I think everybody is guilty of lying to the Holy Spirit. Thank God he has not struck anyone dead. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie? to the Holy Ghost and keep back part of the price of the land. While it remained, was it not thy own? And after it was sold, was it not thine own power? Why hast thou conceived these things in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto man, but unto God. In these words we see, they lied to the Holy Spirit, and Peter said, you lied unto God. Very clear reference that proves in the Bible that the Holy Spirit is God. Amen. Now we find in the book of um, um, in the book of John chapter four, John chapter four, a very clear reference again proving that I'm not bringing a lot of scriptures. Okay, just a couple of scriptures from the Bible, maybe two or three scriptures just to give you. Uh, it will be your duty go home and work more on it and try to find more on it. Okay? Every Christian should study his or her Bible. 
In John chapter 4, verse number 24. In John chapter 4, verse number 24, see what the Bible says. The Bible says, come on, somebody read for me from this side. <coughs> God is a spirit. God is a spirit. Very clear, God is a spirit. spirit. The Holy Spirit is God. Because God is a spirit. Yeah, tell me. And they that worship him. And they that worship him. Must worship him in spirit and in truth. Must worship him in spirit and in truth. If you read in John chapter 4, verse number 24, very clearly you find God is capital spirit. Capital S. A reference to the Holy Spirit. And that's why when you worship God, you need to worship Him in your spirit. Amen? Amen. That's a small s there. Okay? Worship Him in spirit and in truth because God is spirit and the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Amen? Amen. He's the spirit of truth and so you need to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Okay, so we see the existence, eternal existence of God. He was there from the beginning. Okay, eternal spirit, book of Hebrews chapter 9, we find in Genesis chapter 1, he was moving over the face of the earth, okay, then we read in Isaiah chapter 48 uh, about his beginning that he and the, the Lord God and his spirit has said. Okay, now, let's see the personality, is now if he is God, okay, then is he like we say that God is a person. He understands us. He is a person. And uh, He is not a force. But the Jehovah's Witness will say, or the other cults will say, He is like the only Jesus, William Branham, that He is a force and not a person. Now is that what the Bible teaches? Is the Spirit of God a force or a person? Let us see what, what the Bible says. Now, what is the uh, definition of a person? A definition of a person is he should have this intellectual, emotions, and will. Okay? An intellectual, emotion, and will. A person is one who possesses the intellectual, emotions, and will. And we will find his personality. Under his personality, we will see that whenever the, then when the Holy Spirit has been mentioned in the Gospel, Jesus uses personal pronoun like he or him while referring to the Holy Spirit. So we find personal pronoun is used. Personal pronoun is used. And uh, we find uh, in John chapter 14. John chapter 14. In John chapter 14, verse number 16. Someone read. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comfort. Okay. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you what? Another comforter. Another comforter. Why is the word used, another comforter? Why is another comforter used? Because Jesus is the comforter. Amen. The Father is the Comforter, and so now the Spirit of Jesus is saying, I pray the Father that He will give you another Comforter. Okay, then. That He may abide with you forever. That He, personal pronoun, He, masculine gender, will abide with you forever. forever. Okay, so we find personal pronoun, like the word He, is used for the Holy Spirit. We cannot use it for a thing or an energy or a force. Okay, then verse number 17. Even the Spirit of Truth. Even the Spirit of Truth. Whom the world cannot receive. Whom the world cannot receive. Because it seeth him. Because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him. Neither knoweth him. But he know him. But he know him. For he dwelleth with you. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. What we find here, what personal pronoun is used for the Holy Spirit? He, he, he and him. 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 
Okay? He and him is been used by, uh, while explaining about the Holy Spirit, while referring to the Holy Spirit. So we find the personal pronoun that is used for man or person has been used for the Holy Spirit and even the masculine gender has been used for the Holy Spirit. John chapter 16 verse number 13. In John chapter 16 verse number 13. Someone from your the side? 16 verse number 13. How be it when he the spirit of truth is come? How be it when he the spirit of men? How be it when he Okay, that's again. He the spirit is come. He will guide you. He will guide you. In all truths. In all truth. For he shall not. For he shall not speak of himself. Speak of himself. But whatsoever. But whatsoever he shall hear, he shall hear that he shall speak. That shall he speak, and he will show you. And he will show you things, things to, come. to come. Okay, we find the personal pronoun has been used to to refer to the Holy Spirit, which is showing his personality. That shows that he is a person and not a force. I cannot tell. This um, uh, electricity as he or she, right? It's a force. It's a power. But I don't use he or she to the electricity. It's not a person. Now, I don't want what denomination teaches. If Jesus says he and him, I will believe that he is he and him. Amen? Amen. A personal pronoun used for the Holy Spirit. Okay, now we will see under his personality, he does the work of a person. He does the work of a person. Now, what is the work of a person? Now, can a, when was the last time the wind of the fan ever taught you something? The wind of the fan? You know, fan blowing and the wind comes, has he taught you anything? Sorry? Only noise. Only noise. <laughs> okay? He doesn't teach. It's a force. It's an energy. But does not teach. Who can teach you? A person can teach you. So we see now the Holy Spirit does the work of a person. In John chapter 15, verse number 26. John chapter 15, verse number 26. We, we read, the Bible says... What does the Bible say? Yeah, who is that? Come on, read it. But when the Comforter is come, but when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you mm. from the Father, from the Father, even the Spirit of Truth, even the Spirit of Truth, which shall proceed from the Father, which shall proceed, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. He shall testify of me. Testify. Teaching. He testifies. He does the work of a person. He does the work of a person. He testifies. He teaches. Okay? And so we find that the Holy Spirit is doing a work of a person of, of testifying. You know, any, anybody went to the court here? Yeah? Anybody went to the court? I went to the court. Okay, three times because of someone's problem to be as a witness. Okay, but finally that they matched up me. Well, um, I went to the court and I had to testify something in the court, standing inside that. If I was just a force or an energy, could I testify? No. no. But I can testify because I'm a person. person. <laughs> Only a person can testify. Now, I had to show the proof like my proof was to identify that that man took that rod and hit that woman. <laughs> you know, and so they showed me a rod and said, did you see this rod was used by that man to hit that woman? And I had to say yes or no. It was a proof, but it was not testimony. Who was testifying? 
I, a person testifies. Amen? Amen. And so Jesus, and so we find the Holy Spirit doing the work of a person to testify or to teach. Secondly, we see he does the work in John chapter 16, verse number 13. Let's see who gets this immediately. John chapter 16, verse number 13. He has all been read for me. How when he, when he the spirit of truth the spirit of truth is come is come he will guide you he will guide you when was the last time electricity guided you or a force guided you and gave you some guidance who guides you a person right you know tourist guide a person guides right and so the Holy Spirit doing the work of a guide. The guide is a person. He does the work of a person. He guides, and the Bible says, but how by when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Jesus is using every time he, he, he. <coughs> And him, him, and now he is doing the work of guiding. A person who is filled with the Holy Spirit will speak about Jesus Christ. Amen. Remember, anybody, instead of speaking about Jesus Christ and just speaks about the Holy Spirit, be aware, get out from that place. Because that's a familiar spirit. Because a man or a woman who is filled and controlled by the Holy Spirit will not be speaking about the Holy Spirit 90% of time, but rather speaking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Even the Holy Spirit duty is not to take glory for Himself, but to give glory to who? To Jesus Christ. See what the Bible says. That's why this charismatic things on the television and all, that's dangerous. It's a familiar spirit. The Bible is very clear about it. The Bible says, How I, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all the truth, for he shall not speak of himself. You see? But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He's speaking. You know, in other places there, where we find that he will give him the glory, give God the good, give Jesus the glory. Okay? Well, uh, let's see another thing. So he, uh, he does the work of a person. He testifies or teaches. He guides. Then, when was the last time some force prayed for you? Anytime? Intercedes for you? Only a person can intercede. I intercede for you every day. You perhaps, uh, you definitely, I do believe that you are interceding for, for me every day, praying for me every day. Interceding is praying. Amen. We find in the book of Romans chapter 8, verse number 26. Romans chapter 8, verse number 26. Everybody should bring my book, okay? Everybody should bring my book. Okay. Book of Romans chapter 8, verse number 26. Likewise, the Spirit. Yes. Also, the food. Mm. Our infirmity. Likewise, the Spirit also uh, help with our infirmities. For we know. For we know. We pray for not what we should pray for. As, as we ought. But the Spirit. But itself, the Spirit itself. In certain. Make it. Intercedes, the, but the Spirit itself intercedes for us. For us. Okay, the Bible said, but the Spirit in, in itself make an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, the Spirit itself which does intercession. Intercession and pray on behalf of you. Praying for you, okay? And so who does the work of intercession here? The Holy Spirit. He intercedes. He does the work of a person. He's a person or a force now. 
A force cannot intercede you. A force cannot guide you. A force cannot testify at all. But we find the Holy Spirit is testifying, interceding, and guiding. Then we find the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, reproves. Correcting, reproving. John chapter 16, verse number 8. John chapter 16, verse number 8. Someone from the lady's side. John chapter 16, verse number 8. Come on. And when he and when he is come. And when and when he is come, he will reprove. He will reprove the world of sin. The world of sin. And of righteousness. And of righteousness. And of judgment. And of judgment. <laughs> Reproving is the work of a person. <coughs> No force, no energy can reprove anyone. And so the Holy Spirit is doing the work of a person. He is doing the work of a person because he is a person. Okay, so we find he guides, he testifies, he intercedes, he reproves. Now... Who, who can give you command? A commanding officer, right? When was the last time a force or an energy stood in front of you and gave you command? Who gives you command in the school for mass meeting? Some force? Some energy? Cloud nine? Red bull? <laughs> who gives you command? The commanding officer, right? Is a leader. A person gives you command. The Bible says uh, in, in, in Acts chapter 13, verse number 2. Acts number 13, verse number 2. Stay on the read verse. As they ministered to the Lord. As they ministered to the Lord. And fasted. And fasted. The Holy Ghost said. The Holy Ghost said. Said. Separate me. Separate me. Barnabas, Barnabas and Saul, Saul for the work whereunto I have called thee. For the work whereunto I have called thee. Yeah. There. Amen? Amen. Amen? And so we find the Holy Spirit is now giving a command to the church and say, Hey, I want you. Now you have fasted and prayed. Now I command you. I want to tell you something. Listen to me. I want you to separate me, Barnabas and Saul, so that they will go and proclaim the message. Amen? Amen. A force or an energy cannot give command. The person can give you the command. And now the Holy Spirit is telling. Now, I'm not telling anything from my pocket or my opinion. I'm just telling you, if you're a Bible-believing Christian, you're not supposed to believe what the pastor says, but you're supposed to believe what the Bible, Bible. Bible says. And the Bible says, the Holy Ghost said, says, separate unto me, Barnabas and Saul. Amen? Amen. So we find he's doing the work of a person, he's testifying, he's interceding, he's guiding, he is reproving, and he's commanding. <clears throat> and then we will find in, in Titus chapter 3, verse 5. Titus chapter 3, verse 5. He's doing another work of a person. Titus chapter 3, verse 5. Doing the work of a person. Yeah. Not by works of righteousness. Not by works of righteousness. Which we have done. Which we have done. But according to the mercy. But according to his mercy. <coughs> he saved us. He saved us. By the washing of. By the washing of. Regeneration. Regeneration. And renewing. And renewing. Of, of the holy. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Who regenerates? God. A person, a power or a force cannot do that. A person does it. And, this, and the Holy Spirit does the work of regeneration. The Spirit regenerates. 
finally, under the title, His Personality, we will see the Spirit distributes gifts according to His will. Who can distribute? A person distributes, right? But He distributes gifts according to His will. Let us see in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we will see verse number 11. But actually it comes from now. Um, you see, I will read for you verse number 1 onwards. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. You know, not, uh, you know that even Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as evil led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diverse series of gifts but the same Spirit. Uh, that's capital S. And there are differences of administration but the same Lord. And there are diverse series of operation but it is the same God which worketh in all in all. Spirit, Lord and God. That's a triune trinity. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with, with all for one for to one is uh, given by the Spirit the word, the word of wisdom, and to another the word of knowledge, by the same Spirit, to another faith, by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing, by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues, verse number 11. But all these worketh that one and the self same spirit dividing to every man severally as he will according to his will whoever he wants whatever he wants he gives he divides according to his will I never know I never heard about a energy dividing according to his or its will it is a person who does according to his will and so we find he does the work of a person you know why because the holy spirit is not a force or an energy but the holy spirit is a person amen is a person well you know can you grieve this light can you make it sad you can put it off can you make it sad Huh? You cannot hurt the feelings of the light, right? You can only hurt the feelings of a person, right? This light has no, this AC does not have any emotions. That's why we have to control it. Because he does not have any control power. Okay? The AC, the force or energy does not have emotions or any kind of feeling. Only a person has emotions and feelings. Okay, so we will see what are the feelings and emotions of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4 verse number 30. Ephesians chapter 4 verse number 30. Ephesians chapter 4 verse number 30. Whoever gets it. 30, 30. Till we have come. Ephesians. Chapter 4. And grieve not the Holy yeah. Spirit of God. And grieve Lord. not the Holy Spirit of God. Whereby ye are sealed. Whereby ye are sealed. Unto the day of, unto the day of redemption. redemption. I cannot grieve an energy or a force. But I can grieve you. You can grieve me. Because we are persons. And the Bible says grieve not the Holy Spirit. Why? Is it possible that you can grieve the Holy Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit is a person. And you grieve the Holy Spirit by your sins. And you know what? Verse number 29 speaks about what? He let not evil communication proceed out of your mouth. You grieve the Holy Spirit with your words that proceeds out of your mouth. Be careful what you speak. <coughs> Let not your words be something that offends God, offends your brothers, offends your sisters. Don't work for someone to destroy someone. God says, if you destroy my temple, I will destroy you. 
if I try to do something against, against this, these are the temple of God. God dwells in them. Amen? Amen. If I try to hurt them, God's going to destroy me. That's for 100% sure. Amen? Amen? Let me tell you, that's a serious matter. And if you have ever done anything to destroy any Christian, you better go and repent and say sorry to that person. Amen? Amen. If not, you be sure that you will be there destroyed. It doesn't matter whether you are a high five Christian or whatever Christian. If you destroy the temple of God, He will destroy you. Amen? Amen. The Bible says. Okay? And so we find uh, that only... Uh, and so that's why we need to become... Uh, uh, we need to control our words. But Matthew chapter 12 says... Um, you know, for every idle word that we proceed out of your mouth, you will be judged. You will have to give an account to God. Amen? Mm -hmm. So let's be very careful with what kind of words we are using. Okay? So grieve not the Holy Spirit. You can only grieve a person. And that's why the Holy Spirit is a person. Okay? Secondly, we see in Acts chapter, we read that Acts chapter 5, verse number 3 and 4. What happened in uh, Acts chapter 5? Now you, you should be very much familiar with this verse, Acts chapter 5. When the verse, when the chapter Acts chapter 5 comes, you must know that is the word chapter that says that the Holy Spirit is God. Right? And so what happened? What, they, what are they doing to the Holy Spirit? They are lying. Can I lie to AC? Can I lie to a friend? Can I lie to an electricity? No, but I can lie to a person. Amen? Amen? And you know what they are doing? They are lying to the person of the Holy Spirit. And so, he can be lied to. You can hurt his emotions and feelings. He has that feelings and emotions. So, if you can lie to the Holy Spirit, it's because he's a person. If you grieve him, it's because it's a person. Then we will see. Uh, of course, uh, we should read. But Peter said unto Ananias, Why has uh, Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the prize of the land? Okay, lying to the Holy Ghost. And then we say, You are not lied unto men, but unto God. He can be lied to because he's a person. Don't do it. He can be resisted. The stopping. Resistant. In the book of um, Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. In Acts chapter 7, verse number 51. Acts chapter 7, verse number 51. Acts chapter 7 verse number 51. Somebody? He is stiff necked. And uncircumcised in heart and yours. You do always. You do always. Since the Holy Ghost, as your father did, so did do he. Resisting the Holy Ghost. You resist him. You don't allow him to control your life. Yesterday I was visiting somebody and I was sharing the gospel to a white guy and he said to me, Oh, I don't like to be under authority. I like freedom. You know, God puts authority. God put your parents as an authority. He put teachers as an authority. He put the prime minister and the president as an authority. He puts pastors as an authority. To teach us to be under the authority of God Himself. Amen. It's wrong to resist God ordained authority. And your people are resisting the Holy Spirit. You can only resist the person. And the Holy Spirit is a person. Matthew chapter 12, verse number 31. Matthew chapter 12, verse number 31. Is it boring? No, no. Very good. Thank you. This will help you. This studies will help you a lot. Therefore I say unto you. Therefore I say unto you. All men of sin. All men of sin. And blasphemy. Shall be forgiven unto men. But the 
blasphemy. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven. Shall not be forgiven unto He can be blasphemed. You can blaspheme him. You know why? Because he is a person. He has emotions and feelings. So you can lie, you can grieve, you can resist him, you can blaspheme against him. Because he's a person, not a force. Finally, under this title, under his emotion, as well, his feelings as a person, he can be obeyed. You can only obey a person, right? I don't want to obey anything, any energy or anything. You know who are behind that energy? The New Age religion. You know, when the, uh, I and my wife went for a walk in Kandolim Beach, and there was a guy that is an American Indian, I guess, Indian American. And these people have that kind of weird thing. They are on these rodeos, you know. Uh, he had this hat with all the porcupine's feather, and he wore that, and he was doing with that energy. So what he was getting? He was taking the energy from the sun, sun worship. That's what Jehovah's Witness, only Jesus religion is all about. It's a new age religion, worshiping an energy, worshiping a force. We do not worship an energy or a force. We worship a person, God. Amen. Amen. We worship God. And he is a spirit and he's a person. And it was so fun to you know he was watching him was a fun. Actually it's a scary because of what he's wearing. But then watching him was a fun and then saying, wow, this is what real new age worship is all about. Worshiping the sun, trying to get energy from that. Mm -hmm. Okay, in verse X chapter 10, verse number 19, 20, 21, the Bible says, Now you are the story about uh, Cornelius, the angel of the Cornelius, you know, um, got a vision. The angel said, Go to Peter and call Peter, and he's going to come and share the test, uh, gospel. Peter is up in the terrace and he's praying. Uh, he is hungry. He goes up to the terrace. Now he's in trance. He saw a vision. He saw in the vision a vessel filled with unclean animals, and God is saying, Kill and eat. He says, No, Lord, you know I don't eat this thing. He says, No, you gotta eat. And then he says, Now go down. And when he goes down, what happened? God was actually showing him something. And then what happened? And down, those people are there. He says, Are you Simon? Peter, the Simon. Okay, okay, the Holy Spirit has told us to call you to come to Cornelius' house and share the gospel. And what does Peter does? He obeys. In verse number 9, uh, in, in Acts chapter. Uh, Acts chapter 10, verse number 19, 20, 21 says, While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Energy does not say, the Spirit says. The force does not say, the Spirit says. The Spirit said unto him, that's the Holy Spirit, capital S. Behold, three men seek thee, arise therefore and get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing, but I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the man. Amen? Amen. He obeyed. The Holy Spirit can be obeyed. You know why? Because he is a person. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, before we end, just another three points. And these are very important. These are very important. Okay? Let's see his part in creation. If he is God, then he should be a creator. Right? Because in John chapter 1, we see that Jesus created him. In John chapter in Genesis chapter one, we see the Father is in the creation. In actually, in John chapter one and two, we find, "Let us make man." Amen. Okay, one God in three persons uh, in creating work, and so we find here. Now, let us see His part in creation. What did the Holy Spirit do? The work of in the part of creation. In Genesis chapter one, verse one and two, we just read. In the beginning, God created heaven and the earth. The earth was. Without form and void and darkness upon the face of the deep. Mm. And the Spirit of God moved, moved upon the face of the huh? 
and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. While God is creating, the Holy Spirit is there accompanying in the creation. He is creating. There's one more verse I will show you about His creation. See in Psalms, uh, Job, uh, Job chapter 26. Job chapter 26, verse number 30. Maybe some of you are for the first time you're turning to the book of Job. Come on. Job chapter? Chapter 26. Twenty-six verse number thirteen, right? By his spirit, by his spirit, he had garnished the, he heavens. Had garnished the heavens. heavens. His, his hand has formed the crooked serpent. By his spirit, he has garnished the. What? Why is this his watch very small and hairless? It is with a small letter as by His Spirit because it's already mentioning His Spirit is the Spirit of God. Okay? Okay. So by His Spirit, He has gone is the heavens, decorated the heavens. Who? The Spirit of God. God did it by His Spirit. The Holy Spirit gone is the heavens. Psalm chapter 1, um, oh 4, 104. Psalm chapter 104, verse number 30. Psalm chapter 104, verse number 30. Thou sendest. Thou sendest. For thy spirit. Huh? Thou sendest for thy spirit. Thou sendest for thy spirit. They are created. They are created. And thou renewest. And thou renewest the face of thee. Oh, thou sendest the face of thy spirit and they are created. So, by the spirit of God, things were created. God sent his spirit and everything was created. You see, what we see is, in the creating work of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were all involved in the creation work. Ladders. One God in three persons. Okay? is part in creation. So he is there in creation because he is God. Now let us see. Very important. He is part in inspiration. He is part in inspiration. When did he fall? Okay, he is part in inspiration. You know what his inspiration is? God breathing his word and making it alive. The Bible that you have in your uh, lab and that you are turning has life when you believe and read and understand and apply. The word of God is living. Amen? Amen. It will change your life. It will show you. You want to make decisions. Very important decisions. Search the Bible. Yes, sir. Forgot. Okay, next. Yeah. She was so much. Yeah. By the power of the Holy Spirit, she conceived the child in the womb. Yeah. Was it a, what was that? Was it a question or? No. I'm not getting a question. Come on, don't be afraid, come on. Yes. No, he's asking whether it's because of the big S or small S. The big S. What is because that? Because of the Holy Spirit. Power of the Holy Spirit. Huh. So he's asking whether she was consumed by big S. <laughs> yes, the big S, the Holy Spirit. <laughs> That's right, the Holy Spirit, the biggest. Okay, he's part in inspiration. So inspiration is the holy word of God being inspired. Come to uh, Second Peter chapter one. Second Peter chapter one. People say, how do you know the Bible is inspired? How do you know the Bible is God's word? Show them. Second Peter chapter one, verse number uh, 20, 21. Knowing this first, knowing this first, that no prophecy, that no prophecy of the scripture of the scripture is of is any private interpretation. Is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not. For the prophecy came not in old time. In old time. By the will of men. 
by the will of men, but, holy men of God, but the holy men of God speak as they were, what? Speak as they were, speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen? They were moved by the Holy Ghost. And that's how the Word of God is today. They did not write what they wanted to write. They did not write what was in their mind. They were actually moved by the Holy Ghost to write. You know why? Because Jesus said something. See what the Bible says. So who, who is moving this uh, apostles to write? Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. He, they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Um, but the holy men of, <coughs> men of God speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. John chapter uh, 14 verse number 26. In John chapter 14 verse number 26. Uh, John chapter 14 verse number 26. But the comforter. But the comforter. Which is the Holy Ghost. Which is the Holy Ghost. Whom the Father will say. Now listen very clearly and look at your Bible. The, whom the Father will say. In my name. In my name. He shall teach you. He shall teach you. Teach you. I should have given you this verse also for testifying. Okay, thank you very much. He shall teach you all things. All things. And bring all things to and bring all things to your remembrance. To your remembrance. Whosoever. Whosoever. I said unto you. I whatsoever I have said unto you. You know what? Jesus is now saying, you know what? He will he will teach you. And he will bring you to remembrance whatsoever I say unto you. So, you know, how did he bring to remembrance? <laughs> There's holy men of God. They were moved by the Holy Spirit. And they were reminded everything. And the Holy Ghost moved them and they began to write. This is what the Jesus, the, uh, the inspiration of the scripture is what Jesus was speaking when he spoke in John chapter 3. John chapter 16. Okay? But the comforter which is the Holy Ghost whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. So how does he teach? He teaches us from the scripture. Okay? He teaches us from the scripture. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. And, then, and these people, the apostles were reminded and they were moved and they penned down everything that was inspired to them. This was given to them. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, all scripture, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. And it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. <coughs> That the man of God might be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Right? All scripture is given by the inspiration. You know what inspiration means? God breathing. His breath is the spirit. His breath is the Spirit and God breathed His Spirit into the Word and this are inspired. It is the Holy Ghost who does into the work of inspiration of the Bible. He moves the holy man to write. He reminds them. He teaches them whatsoever Jesus has said and it's there all in the Bible. If you want an answer, don't ask for an experience. Ask what is such what is written in the scripture. Everything that you want today to know to have the decision to make is mentioned in the Bible. All that you got to do is prayerfully seek Him, you will find Him. Amen? Amen. So His part in creation, His air creation, His inspiration, and His part in salvation finally. His part in salvation. In Acts chapter 20, verse number 28. In Acts chapter 20, verse number 28. Hey, by the way, next Sunday, I'm going to teach on soul. I'll tell you, I'm really excited about it. I, I was just praying alone. I went somewhere far away and I was praying to God. And I was asked, I was praying, spending some time in prayer with God. And I was, and then 
the Lord put these things in my mind, the study about soul. And I came home and I started studying and searching the scripture about soul. And the Lord has, so, has really brought my mind into scripture so much. I'm so excited about it. I'm really looking forward to teach this next Sunday about the soul. And now you will definitely be, um, it will help you a lot studying about this soul. It's so beautiful. And I hope you'll uh, come with, uh, with prayerfully and prepared to, to study about soul next Sunday. It's wonderful. Okay, now Acts chapter 20, verse number 28. Take it therefore, Take it therefore unto yourselves, unto yourselves and, to all the flock, and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost had, made you overseers, had made you overseers to feed the church, to feed the church of God which he had purchased with his own blood. Who died on the cross? Jesus Christ died on the cross. He shed his precious blood. But here the Bible says the Holy Spirit has made you overseer over the church of God, which he has purchased by his own blood. He is a person. Okay? And what happened is he works in our salvation. There is no remission of sin without the blood shedding of blood. In Titus chapter 3, verse 5, it says, No works of righteousness. Read. Titus chapter 3 verse 5. On the work of your righteousness, <coughs> which you have done, according to his mercy, he saved but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing the, of the Holy Ghost. You know how you get saved? When he regenerates you. Regeneration means making you a new creature or a new creation or making you born again unless you are born of the water and of the Spirit. You cannot enter the kingdom of God. You have to be born of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that regenerates you and renews you, makes you a new creature, makes you a new creation when you put your faith in the shed blood, death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit does the work of your salvation. Amen? Amen. So when it comes to salvation, when it comes to creation, all the three, one God in three persons are involved. When it comes to inspiration, one God in three persons are involved. When it comes to even resurrection of the body of Jesus Christ, you will find the Father raised him, the Spirit raised him, and Jesus raised him. Three, one God in three persons involved in the resurrection of the body of Christ. When it comes to salvation, one God in three persons involved in your salvation. Amen? You are regenerated by the Holy Ghost. Which means you are made alive by the Holy Ghost. You are made born again by the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. John chapter 3 verse number 6 says, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is... You're born of the Spirit when you're saved. It's the Spirit of God gives you new birth. His part in, his, in, in salvation. Finally, verse 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 13. His baptism, salvation, is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When you are saved, you are baptized by the Holy Spirit. See what the Holy Spirit does to you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 13. For by one spirit, for by one spirit we, are all baptized we are all baptized into one body. One body. Whether, we Jews, whether we are Jews or Gentiles, or Gentiles whether we be born, whether we be born or, free, or free, and have been, and or have made, been all, made, all made to drink into one, one body. You know what is the baptism of the Holy Spirit is? Baptism of Holy Spirit is not jumping up and down and speaking in tongues or falling up and down. Baptism of the Holy Spirit is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 13. The Holy Spirit placing you into the body of Christ. You, you get into one body by the same Spirit. That's salvation. He takes you out and puts you in Christ. Amen? Amen. That's baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay, He makes you a new creature. I in me and you in me. I in you and you in me. Okay? 
And so we find the Holy Spirit involved in creation, in inspiration, and in salvation. And it's not a force, it's not an energy, but he's a person. And we find how he has emotions, he has intellectual, he has really he has emotions because you can grieve him, you can lie to him, you can bless him. He has will because he distributes and gives according to his will, and he has uh, emotion, intellectual, because he gives you knowledge and he testifies and he teaches. Amen. Amen. Only a person can do. The Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is God. Amen. Amen. And so we worship the Holy Spirit as God and not as a energy or a force. Anyone rejecting the deity of the Holy Spirit is an antichrist. Anyone rejecting the deity of the Holy Spirit is not of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Shall we pray?